Good morning, GCP students. So today in our lesson, we are going to be looking at firstly the aerobic and anaerobic energy pathways or energy sources. Um, so I posted a little resource for you on the Google Classroom. This is just sort of an introduction. Let me explain it a little bit. It's all review stuff. We've done this before and we've done it in science well. As I said, it's just going over this again. So we're looking at firstly the aerobic energy pathway. Now, are there a rubber energy pathway is the best way or the primary way we get energy or to move or fuel to move. So the rubber energy pathway in, involves using glucose and oxygen to create energy. But as well as that, we create CO2, um, water and heat. But we're using oxygen and glucose to create movement. Now, what fuels do we use for that glucose? Well, glucose is normally from carbohydrates. So the carbohydrates, when we eat them, will be stored as glycogen if they're complex in the muscles to be used when we need it. Or if we eat simple sugars, that glucose will be available in the bloodstream to be used for aerobic energy. Okay, now, a couple of things to add to that. We can also use fat for fuel for aerobic energy. So if we're working aerobically, we can also use fat. Now, generally they say if you start exercising after about 20 minutes, 15 minutes, because the fat molecules are much harder to break down, it will take about 10, 15, 20 minutes normally for the fat molecules to break down to be used as energy as well. So once that happens, you'll be using around 40% um, fat for fuel and 60% carbohydrates for fuel or glucose um, to work aerobically. So a long distance runner or a marathon runner or somebody who relies on an aerobic energy pathway, which is generally sort of using type one muscle fibers, a football to last the whole game, a basketball player to last the whole game, and um, marathon runners, and meter runners, these sorts of athletes, they will have a diet that will involve both um, fats and carbohydrates for their energy fuel, for their energy sources to be used in this source. Now we also have the anaerobic energy pathway. Now the anaerobic energy pathway is used when we need to train more intensely. So when we're increasing our um, our vigor when we're training, when we're using our type 2A and type 2X fibers. These are generally be working anaerobically. Now, when we work anaerobically, we cannot get enough oxygen into our system to work at this intensity level. So we can't use that. So we only use um, glucose. Now, when we use the glucose in an anaerobic energy pathway, we create something called lactic acid. And that lactic acid builds up in our muscle and it's that pain feeling you get when you're working out. So if you're pushing yourself, you're sprinting or you're lifting weights, that pain, that deep burn, that's the build of lactic acid. And that eventually will make us stop. Um, the more you train and the more adapted you are training, the longer you can with, withstand that um, lactic acid feeling, but eventually it will make you stop. Um, now, when we train anaerobically, we can only use our um, we can only use glucose for energy. So a sprinter, a weightlifter, um, a power athlete, a shot putter, a high jumper, people who are using only the anaerobic energy pathway system, they will want to get all of their fuel for energy through carbohydrates because there's no point in them having a high fat diet because they can't use fats as an energy source. When we're looking at protein, protein actually can be used aerobically for energy if you need it, but it's generally not it's as much. Um, anaerobically, a power-based athlete would have um, more protein in their diet because it would help their muscle cells recover. So they wouldn't be using it for, for um, would be using it for energy they will use that to help recover their muscles that will be getting broken down during the anaerobic training. Okay, that's the first video of today. Um, also, lactic acid, when it's produced, I forgot to add that in, lactic acid, when it's produced, needs to be called what? Ox needs to be oxidized. So oxidization is very, very important. So that means that it's the excess. After you've, after you've trained, you will continue to breathe heavily. And that heavy breathing takes place and also your heart rate will stay high. That happens to help get rid of the lactic acid that's built up in the muscle. So um, after we've built this up, we need to get rid of it. And what happens is it will be turned into carbon dioxide um, through oxygen, and then we'll breathe it out. It'll also get turned into water um, as well. Um, we get rid of that through sweat or through breathing all the time. Okay, that's the first video on the energy um, and energy sources. I'll post another one on the long and short-term effects of exercise.